Okay. So we're on. How are you, Judge? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you, Judge Selfie? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, thanks for doing these videos with me. Um, and uh, I'm excited. Yeah, so this is something different. I know that typically being on the bench seems a little bit easier to talk to people, but it seems that our current situation of COVID is in it allowing us an opportunity to connect with, you know, the private bars, pro se litigants, and the general public. So I thought this would be a good idea. So I think it's a great idea. I'm excited to participate and uh, I'm here to help in any way I can. So for those of you that don't know, my name is Gloria Lopez. I am the judge in the 308 Family District Court, and this is my associate judge, Ryan Salfiti. So welcome on this weekend before June 1st. We just got the news this weekend that certain things are gonna start to evolve and change and slowly but surely we're gonna try to provide some help and hear some trials in front of the judges in the court. So we're here to kind of answer some of the frequently asked questions without actually having a public, but we can discuss the 308 and probably give you some insight as to what changes have occurred, what changes are going to stay for the month of June, and what to expect for June of 2020. So we have a lot of changes coming up, but they're exciting changes. And I think they are changes that is going to allow the private bar and the court staff um, and, you know, Judge Lopez and I all remain safe and social distance and try and get cases heard at a faster pace than we have been doing uh, in the past couple of months. Of course, I mean, the goal ultimately is to make sure that all of us are safe and healthy and that your families remain safe and healthy as well. So the risk of exposure is something that we have been cognizant of since March. I can't believe it, since March. March 12th is when everything kind of moves so quickly. And now we're approaching June on Monday. So a lot of changes have happened. And the these couple videos, videos, I'm sorry, there goes my accent, right? <laughs> these couple of videos are just going to give you some insights of only the 308 and what's going to happen for the month of June of 2020. If things start changing, and I'm positive they will, because everything is moving so quickly and changing and evolving, um, we are going to update you and provide you those changes. So, so first topic. Yeah. All right. First topic, I think we should talk about virtual dockets because that's definitely something new that hasn't happened at all in the 308. So virtual dockets are what, Judge Self-Eating? So virtual, virtual dockets are exactly like docket calls as if you are in the courtroom. Um, we have it set up to where either Judge Lopez or myself, depending on who you are scheduled with, will go live at nine o'clock and we will go through a list of cases that are on the virtual docket for that morning. So um, it is important to make sure everybody is noticed for <laughs> what a virtual docket is. Uh, Judge Lopez, can you explain more if I'm missing anything? Yeah, so it's just like you stated, it's exactly as though you were in the courtroom. It's a virtual courtroom that's gonna be conducted virtually. So the docket will also be done virtually. Now, unfortunately, we are going to limit the number of cases at the beginning of June, and we're going to slowly but surely evolve to possibly handle more cases as the month goes on. But bear with us. This is also new for us. This is something we're trying to implement to add to the options that we currently have. For example, submission docket, right? Submission, you draft your motion, you submit it, people respond, and then the court rules. I understand that people learn differently, so they practice differently. There are certain lawyers and also pro se litigants that possibly don't find the submission docket to be their favorite. So maybe you wanna set for a virtual docket the motion to appoint an amicus, and it may be a five to 10 minute thing that you just approach the judges virtually with the opposing counsel or all necessary parties, and you can get that motion heard and get a ruling from the court quickly and expeditiously. 
And so what's going to happen is, is after uh, we call out what is on the docket and everybody makes their appropriate uh, appearances, uh, we will kind of go case by case and, you know, we may put people in what's called a waiting room uh, while we handle one case at a time. And so um, this is not a time for you to uh, negotiate. Uh, and if you do want to negotiate, you can ask us and we can try and work out some sort of breakout room. But, um, you know, try and do all that before you come to us with a, on the virtual docket. I am fully aware of the fact that as attorneys, sometimes when you approach court or you show up to court for docket call, it may be the very first time you meet a lawyer or have contact with a lawyer or a pro se litigant. So it may be that you have not had an opportunity to negotiate, to discuss things. So a breakout room will be an option. Now, again, this is all new. So how it's going to happen and how you can get that done may be very rocky at the beginning, but with communication, we can get through it. If you can just let the presiding judge of the virtual docket know, judge, we would wish to have a virtual uh, breakout room with all necessary parties, and then we can submit you to this, essentially what would be the attorney ready room in the courtroom. That way you guys can negotiate and discuss things. That's an option. You can also contact our court coordinator or our clerk that will also be part of the virtual docket while possibly one of us is hearing an actual case before us. So you do have a chat feature in the Zoom meeting IDs. So you have the ability to send a chat specifically to Jeanne Beard or to Giselle, my lead clerk, and ask, hey, Giselle, the following people really need to be placed in a breakout room. Or hey, Jeanne Miss Beard, we really need to be placed in a breakout room before the judge calls us. It's an option. Um, one thing I will highlight and stress, the virtual docket is not created to be a motion that you anticipate to be three or four hours. These are so supposed to be very quick and fast and easy. So if you have a motion that you foresee all parties needing a total of three to four hours, my recommendation is to preferentially set those, that motion for three to four hours on our online scheduling system. But we'll discuss that in our next video. Any other tips or insight, Judge Salfidi, that you may want to provide to people about virtual dockets? And just so everybody is aware, um, it's easy to get a virtual hearing, um, but you do need to have your motion filed first. So whatever you are trying to get done on the virtual docket, you need to have your motion filed first. So that way we can properly set uh, what it is that is being set for that day. Yeah, it's similar to being in our regular old school docket. If you wanted to obtain a hearing date for a docket call, typically you would call the court after you filed a motion. It'd be similar to a virtual docket. File your motion, and then after you file that motion, go online and schedule the date you would like to appear for that virtual docket. So, Judge Selfie, what type of motions or ancillary matters do you believe could be accommodated in a virtual docket? So, you mentioned a motion to like appoint an amicus. Um, uh, a motion for to waive an ad litem or a motion to appoint an ad litem. If you see that we've denied it in the docket entry, um, you can approach on the uncontested. Um, short hearings like that, um, even things such as um, if you think you're going to have a quick prove up or something quick like that, uh, a motion to appoint a mediator, we can handle those quickly in a virtual docket. Again, this does not mean that you cannot hear these motions or have the court consider them by submission. Certainly the joint policies and procedures of Harris County have provided a very long list of options, motions that can be considered by submission. But as previously stated in this video, I understand that certain attorneys and even pro se litigants may find it easier to set a motion and have it considered in a virtual docket. So 
That's in regards to ancillary matters. If you have a trial virtual docket, that's a bit different. Um, I think it goes without saying that if you are scheduled for a preferential virtual docket in the 308 on Tuesdays, you're not going to have, I am not forcing you to have a Zoom trial that date. So do not anticipate to provide that Zoom meeting ID to 10 of your witnesses. No, that Zoom uh, virtual trial docket is an opportunity for one, the attorneys to possibly act, talk to their opposing counsel and obtain a status as to where we are um, and provide you a preferential setting for an in-person trial if necessary or a Zoom trial if agreed to by all the parties. So it is a status and one may say it's a pretrial conference but they were previously scheduled in our court docket as trial settings. So be prepared to appear and provide the court the status of your trial or your case, I'm sorry. And if you're ready to go, then great. That just means that it provides the court the opportunity to preferentially set you in person and to stagger the witnesses and how many witnesses you have when they will come in that way we cause less contact or less people to come at the courthouse all at the same time. Anything else you can think of? Uh, for these topics, no. All right. So that concludes our first video regarding virtual dockets in the 308. I know it seems like a lot of information. I know that this is all very new. I promise you it's going to be rocky at the beginning, but it be, may be something that we like. And if not, at least it's a nice little Band-Aid for now. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for other videos regarding other topics or frequently asked questions in the 308.